Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to a special episode of Liquid Brain. All with you know, all thanks to the COVID nineteen and the self quarantine. So today, I'm doing something slightly different. I'm not actually do, talking about databases, uh, machine learning, bioinformatics, and so on. So we're gonna switch gear a little bit today. We're gonna really talk about what is um, some some a little bit about um, what is that called app development and actually how to get started in the idea. So the platform I'm using today is actually something called AppSheets. So AppSheets is actually a no-code development platform for application software which allow users to create mobile tablets and web applications using data source like Google Drive, Dropbox, Office 360 and other cloud based spreadsheet and database database platform. So what, what does it do is that it allows you to make an app for let's say Android, iOS, as well as something you can use on a computer via a browser. So a, a single thing and you are able to just do everything on that. So if I'm not wrong, they are written in Flutter, so they are able to work on every platform and they are recently being acquired by Google, I think early this year or late last year. So they work really well with Google to each other. So well, the, the agenda today is just that uh, I'm going to go through this and actually show you how I can make my own uh, budget tracking app. So of course, it's going to be a lot more than this. It's just going to be a very simple introduction on how to uh, go through a process of making an app and how to link that from your Google Sheets into uh, App Sheets. So you don't have to use Google Sheets, but it's just uh, the thing that I'm more familiar with. So the first thing you have to do, of course, is open up Google Sheet in your Google Drive. You can save it in wherever, whatever, it doesn't really matter. So I'm making something like a budgeting app. So how much money have I spent this month based on different category? So with that aim, we're gonna first create our spending spreadsheet. Remember, this has to be in a structured format. Otherwise, it's really difficult to do any further uh, calculations or summarization later. So what does it mean by a structured format? It's, it's sort of like a SQL style data structure where every single column has to be the same data type. So the first column is timestamp where it has to be in a date time format. So everything here will have a date and the time within it. A uh, user email, of course, will be the user ID that they put in just in case your, uh, your app is being uh, used by multiple people. We are able to filter that out and using only a single database and we can filter it afterwards. So category will be maybe like, you know, food, uh, houses, insurance, investment, uh, transportation and so on. So name of maybe we we'll just put name of spending. So maybe it's just uh, what kind of thing are you spending on? So today you take buses, so they'll be under transport category and you know your amount spend is how much because of the, the buses that you do, you, you take or you know, you are using, let's say um, I'm eating nasi lemak this morning. So category will be food and name will be nasi lemak. Okay, and you, it's two ringgit maybe. So the first thing is, has to, is to identify which one of it we want it to be, let's say a drop down list where it has a fixed criteria and category. So timestamp is fine, it's just wherever the, the user had input the data, we just capture that and use it as our unique key. So if you're not familiar with the idea of unique key, unique key is that something very specific to uh, the data structure. So every single row will have a unique key that is only specific and only present in that row basically. And user email is fine, it's just the email addresses. Category will be the one that we want to uh, categorize them into a fixed amount of category. We don't want 100 different categories. Uh, while name of spending, nothing we can do. We have to make it uh, optional for tax input. Amount spend will be in decimal point, so 0 0.02 or something like that. So it's of course useful to just enter some dummy data for your own understanding as well as the development later. But I'm not gonna do it now because it's kind of a straightforward thing to do. So the so after you have, you have set up a spending spreadsheet, you have to go into what we call category. So this is the drop down that we're going to use for the things later. So of course you have to have a unique key for the idea to, to, to actually identify each row because otherwise the data structure is very confused if you don't give it a unique key. So let's say the first category is food, secondary transport. Uh, maybe the category is rental and you also have insurance and you also have others. Okay, so let's just do it. Okay, so you have five different categories. So you want to be able to key in your category only by one of these five. Okay, so once we're done, let's go to AppSheet. So if you are signing to AppSheet via the Google, like me, so you should be greeted with something like this where you have uh, some of the app that you already developed. So this is something that I did 
uh, period to this video just to have a testing and understanding of that. So what you do is that you go to the button here called new app where you start with your own data because you already have the data set up in your Google, Google Sheet just now. So just name it something you want. I'll just call it budget. So the budget track, maybe budget tracking app. And since we don't really have a budget thingy here, we're just gonna put others and we choose the data. So what? how do you choose the data is that you need the name of your Google Sheets over here. So you can just type in the name and you can just search for the, it will just automatically search for this. So. Uh, budget app budget app so let's just choose this and select so we should be able to uh there will be they will of course the machine itself will be trying to set up your application for you but that's usually not perfect and without any data they dummy data inside they don't really understand what individual words mean there are certain things that can get it right but not everything so we're going to go in and try to see what we can do so while they're building an app so the first thing you have to think of is what do I want in an app and how do I want it to display? So the, the simple idea is that maybe I want it to a place to key in my spending and a way to summarize my spending. And another one, the best thing is to display that in a calendar. So I know which day I spend things on where on a very simple uh, dashboard design that I can just look at it and understand. Okay, so uh, what we have loaded here. So let's go to our data structure here. So for all the app development platform or making of an app, the simple concept is that it's basically databases with logic. So there's two things over here. First is the data, which is the data backend, the databases that your application is running on, as well as the UX, which the user experience is what the user will, will be able to see based on the data that you fit it in. So if you go to data, we can see there's a single table. So they did not actually add the second tab for us. They will only add this tab over here. So let's just manually add the new table in. So budget app, that is the spreadsheet that we imported just now. Let's go to categories and we want it to be a read only. So the first one, of course, for the spending, we want it to be able to read, um, to write, maybe uh, even update the individual lines if you enter it wrongly. But for the categories, you do not want to change it, so you only want it to be read only. And we just add this table, so now we have two different tables. We have to go in and check if our data structure in our first table is correct. So let's just wait for it to load and it should take a while for it to, to understand what it is and actually recalculate a lot of things. Okay, so let's go to spending. So we're gonna update, we're gonna add, maybe we don't want it to delete so, so that you don't accidentally delete something and you, know, you can't get it back. So if you want, you can edit it and change the spending to zero so it doesn't affect the calculations for in, but you do not want to delete databases. So that's usually for security reasons and so on. So you also have an easier way to track all the entries and all that things that people won't go in and delete your stuff and you can't get it back. Okay, so let's go to columns. So every every columns is has to be the same data type, which is what I mean over here. So the first one is a row number, which is automatically imported because they are they are, they required for a data that have no data and they don't know which one's the unique key. So in this case, it's automatic detect time spam as the key and user email is an email, category is a text, which is a problem, we'll fix that later. Name of spending is not a name, it's actually some text. So let's just go for text. And the amount spent is not a number, it's actually a decimal. So because there are things like 6.9, that of course depends on the currency, your currency that might not have decimal point, then you can use number, this one is a lot easier. So for this one, you need some initial value. So we have seen that time spam over here already have an initial value of now, which you, we will actually input the, the current date and time when the user input data. But this one, we need something of like the user email. So remember, app sheet usually only works with a limited amount of users. So you want the user to be locked in by the time. So you can save it and you should actually display the email later. Okay, now it's the category. Now it's the problem that we want to solve because we want this instead of a text. It's actually a reference list of dropdown. So what you do is that you go to edit the column, actually go to reference and we want it to refer to categories and we can click done. So that will change it to a reference list and you will see why later. So of course, in here, you also have to change the label to categories and change the key to key. So they're able to understand which one to display later on, okay? So that now we are done with the databases. We are clear on what we are putting into our app and what we want it to represent. Okay, so now let's go to our user experience. So user experience, of course, automatically they give you three. So for categories, they'll give you a different type of categories you might, might not want. 
So maybe I don't really want to look at it. I'll just hide it in the menu. So you will just be here and we don't really look at it in the normal amount of time. Okay, let's go to our second one, spending. So spending is currently uh, that, which is nothing. So we'll see why later. So, so this is almost done it's because there's no data. We'll change later when we see the data. Okay, the calendar. Or okay, but there's no data. So let's the first thing we do, let's go to do some data here. So my user email doesn't get saved, so let's just save the idea because uh some of the edit that we do to the column just now has not been saved and reload into our interface. Just in case you don't know, the, the right preview over here is actually how your app will look like. So if you pipe your app into a mobile interface, it will roughly look like that. And of course, there are also tablet view, which is how it will work on the larger screen as well as the another tab which is how you can see it in let's say a full fledged um, website format so you can also see it here where things it is how we look in a website format so it's a little bit back and we go back to our mobile platform because this is what we are targeting for now so let's go to add so we can see my email is here my timestamp is here let's say i I spend um, nasi lemak in the morning, so I ate some nasi lemak and I spend two ringgit and 50 cents here, so safe. So I got one line, so yes, it's recording, everything is perfect. Let's just add another one. Okay, let's say I have transport and I take buses for like five ringgit and 20 cents today. So done, we have a second one, let's add another one for let's say my rental, shall we? So my spending maybe is 500, sorry, name of spending is um, March maybe, and I spend 500 of it. So. So now we have different line. We can actually refresh the app just to make sure that everything is saved properly and we're able to see uh, whatever in the backend. So now is a problem. Calendar works perfectly fine, but you know, it's displaying my name, my email, not very helpful. It'd be better if I can display it as, let's say, my, the, the thing of thing that I spend. I'm spending, I don't want it to have so many details because you know, I don't need to know the exact time and date that I do or something. So I need a more comprehensive view over here. So what you can do is that you go to UX, so just use experience, go to spending and choose table. So this will make things a lot easier to see. It will just have a name. And if you go to here, they'll actually show you the, the individual lines of that thing. And maybe we also want to sort it by uh, time span. So there are ascendings from older to newer, or you can put descending so it's newer to older. We can also group by, let's say, categories. And we also want to group some of um, our spends. Now we know that we spend 250 on food and we have spent 500 on rental and we have spent 520 on the transport. Okay, so if you go to calendar, you can also see, oh, there's something still wrong over here. So now we have done with spending. We have done with the form. Let's just go into calendar and try to change this. So what you do is that you go to calendar UX and here is start and it's fine. So description user email, we want name or spending. That's more useful. Now you can see everything is different. Okay, so you can also change a lot of things like how do you want to display the icons and some of the behavior and some of the documentation of the UX. We're not going to go into that far here. You can also have a look at the category in the menu view, which means that you will you'll be faster here. Okay, so now the basic app is, is done. So you want to, let's say, rename your app, change a bit of a color. You can do it here. Let's say I want it dark mode with purple color. You can do that. Uh, you want the app logo to be, let's say, a calculator, easier. Uh, and you can also change the launch image and background. Let's just do that as well. So we will be able to see some different uh, startup animations and how it will look like when you, when you start the app. There's a lot more things you can change and customize in here. It's a really, really powerful platform for people that have no, let's say, Flutter or React Native experience, like me, basically. <laughs> Okay, so now we have refresh the app. You can actually see you would take a while to load it or it doesn't load. Load. It's gone. <laughs> okay, let's just close the other thing so that it's a lot easier to see. Okay, so we're back. So you can see the, the, the launch image have changed to a different image. And now we should be able to also see the background. No, it doesn't. Okay, let's just go back to here and go back to another tab just in case that there's something wrong trying to load the image over there. Okay, we just break the thing. <laughs> okay, it's back, so it's fine. So you can see now we have changed it to a dark mode. We have a different wallpaper, which is the background image that you have set just now. And of course, you can go back to info. These are the relationships of each other. And you can say edit logo, not here. 
format rules, options, and all that thing. So you can also change a lot of things about your app over here. Not gonna go through it. And finally, now is that you've done your app, now you want to share it to uh, the user, you want to share it out. So there's, there's several things. First of all, you're not supposed to, if you are, let's say, a company, I think you're allowed to have 10 people to look at it if you do not pay, but I don't think you're allowed to do it on the enterprise. You need to buy it. If you are for personal or educational use, I think it's fine for you to test it out. And only once you are able to, you know, comprehend that this is what you need and then you buy the app. So what you do is that you can just type in the user email that you want to share your app to. So I'm just going to send it to myself. So this is my own email address, so that so to say I'm not a robot and I just uh, add user and invite. So that would send an invitation to myself and that's how I was able to um, invite people to try my app. So yeah, extremely likely, submit, so on. Okay, so that's basically done. So now if you want to look at your app, let's just do this. So let's just have a full comprehensive view of our app as a summary. So we have, what we've done here is a very basic, very simple budgeting app that have a, a summary of things that you spend, a form where you can input uh, rental categories, uh, name of spending for maybe February, spend the same amount, and when you type it in, you should just add it in here, give a summary of each category, as well as calendar view. So just to get you to see a calendar view, let's say we do not want it to key in today, we want to say last week we spent on, on food, let's say I'm buying some McDonald's for 99 cents, you can actually see that there's a different thing over here where we know that we have spent McDonald's at this time, at this as hour. So everything is recorded properly, nicely, and displayed in a way that people can easily comprehend and understand. So, well, I think that's all for now. There's a lot more you, you can explore on yourself, and I will try to make a follow-up once I complete a little bit more advanced on this. Um, for now, thank you for watching Liquid Brain. I will see you in the next one. Bye.